Are you intimidated by pivot tables? Is the lack of familiarity with pivots keeping you from harnessing the numerous pivot table benefits? Do you think they're complicated? In this tutorial, we will take it from the beginning and in an easy step-by-step -step way, we will conquer your fears and show you how much you'll be missing out. Welcome! In this beginner's guide, we will go over the basics and mechanics of creating and using pivot tables. You will learn how to organize and summarize large amounts of data, customize your analysis, and leverage Excel's powerful data analysis tools. We will work with two file extracts, student grades, and the second file is the annual expense details for company XYZ. Check out the questions that we'll be responding to pertaining to these two examples. I will demonstrate how quickly you can answer all these questions, and not only, and the best thing, without using a single formula. So how do I start? The most important aspect in order to use pivot tables effectively, all users need to have a clear understanding of the data and how it is structured. This can require some effort and analysis. So let me demonstrate. In order to use pivot tables effectively, users need to have a clear understanding of the data and how it's structured. In our example, we're working with uh, the student subject grades. So the first thing we need to do, the data needs to be in a tabular form formatted like a table. Then we need to check the titles of each column to ensure that they're more descriptive. Let's make some modifications to correctly represent the data. Third, and very important, we need to check for any blank columns or any blank rows. In our example, we see that column E is blank, which prevents us from selecting the entire table data See, if I hit Control A, you see that it only selects portion of our data. So let's delete the column. And same thing with the blank cross. If you try to select the data, you see that only portion of the data gets selected. So let's delete the blank rows. Then we, you need to check for any duplicates. And the last one, you need to check if any records are incomplete. Having reviewed and completed all the necessary data checklists, now we are ready to move on to creating our pivot tables. In this example, we're working with the grades report for the students in different classes. The data we're working with is as follows. So we have the student ID, the student name, the class code, the course description, the, letter, the number grade, and then the conversion to a letter grade. Click anywhere in the table. At the home tab, click insert, choose pivot table, confirm the table range selected is includes all your data. And then you have the option to move it to a new worksheet or to the current worksheet. Let's click OK. Let's go over the pivot interface. On the left, we have the pivot table. This is the main area of the interface where the pivot table is displayed. On the right, we have the field list. This is a separate window that displays all of the available fields from the source data Users can drag fields from the field list to the pivot table fields to add them to the pivot table. There are four areas below the fields. We have the filters area, the columns area, the rows area, and the sigma values area. The sigma values area is the area where we drop fields that needs to be calculated. We can do sum, averages, counts, and so on and so forth. Let's go to the pivot table fields and look at it in more details. 
the fields here are the column headers from your report. This whole area can be moved out and bring it closer to your pivot area or it can go back. You may also want to expand it, leave it there, but expand it. Okay. The four areas below are the areas where we can drag the fields and get the results that we're looking for. In this report, let's, we try, let's try to get the average for each student based on the subject grades they received. So we have to do just drag the name down to the rows area and then you see that automatically on the left you have the three students. You can drag it out if you want to remove it or you can just go and click on it and by default it goes into the row area. Let's add also the courses for each student. By putting the course below the student name, then you look at this report. We show the student and the courses, student and courses. If we can rearrange them by just simply dragging up or down. So if I move the course up, see now the report is focused on the subject, the course, and who attended it the subject and who attended the course and so on. So let's bring this down. Now let's pick up the grade, the number grade and move it to the calculation area. By putting the grade here on each subject, you're going to notice that you get the grade, but then on top we get the sum of the grades, which is not helpful. We're looking for the average. To switch to the average, just click on the sum of grade, click value field settings, and select average. Change the number format to number with thousand separator, no uh, decimals, and click OK. And there you have it. So David Kim, his grade average is 76 based on these three grades he received. John Smith average is 89 based on these three grades he received and so on and so forth. Notice that next to each person, we get the expand or collapse sign. What this does, if we click on this, you see that the um, subgroup of the data gets collapsed and we only see the average. You can do the same thing. So this is the average for John Smith and this is the average for Sara Lee. To expand or collapse all the data and the people table is analyzed. You see here we have two Two options, expand field, so it expands everything. Collapse field, it collapsed everything. Let's expand all the fields. Notice that the two fields appear all in the same column, but the additional fields, in this case the course, are intended within the same column. If we wanted to switch the layout to a tabular form, we can do that from Pivot Table Analyze, click on Options, select Options, choose Display, and check the classic Pivot Table layout, and click OK. This layout offers a separate column for each field we add in our report. If we wanted to add also the student ID in the beginning, for each student, we can just do that by just putting student ID. And then you will see that now we have three columns. Student ID, 
to the name and the course. And next to it, we have the grade received for each subject. At the bottom of each group, we have the total average for the course for the student. Let's clear up here and I would like you to focus on one value. By leaving the average only, that gives us the entire class average or the entire school average based on the grade. That's another way of looking at your data. Let's take another look at the data. Let's move the grades to the rows and then let's put the student ID under values. Now this time we're counting. So what we just did, we listed all the grades and how many people received that grade. So A, one person, A minus, three people and so on and so forth. Let's look at it differently. Let's move the letters grade at the columns area. So now on top you have A, A minus, and so on and so forth. And let's put the student name as at the row area. And then let's put the student ID under the values with the count option. So what we just did, we created a report that gives us that for each grade, who and how many of these grades someone received. For example, David Smith received 1A, John Smith received 2A minuses, and so on and so forth. Let's try this. Let's move the class to the rows area and let's move the grade to the sum area and switch the function from sum to average. F select number, no decimals, and click OK. What we just did, we created a report that gives us the average for each class. So class 10A is 89, and so on and so forth. Let's move the class area, the class field, to the filters area. This will give us the ability to filter the data by class. And let's move the course to the rows area. Right, so right now we have the average per course. So for math, the average is 91, for science is 75, and for English is 88. The overall average of the class is 85. If we wanted to see specifically for which class, we can just filter by selecting which classroom, let's say, and we can pick 10A, and these are the averages for each subject for that class. There are so many ways to look at your data, but the main thing is understanding your data fully, the information it contains, and also the structure. In this example, we're working with the detailed expense data for 2022 of our fictitious company XYZ. The data structure as follows. First column is the calendar year period. Second column, column B, is the expense date. Column C is the payee. Column D is the category of expense. And last but not least, column E is the expense amount. Our data includes approximately 1,300 lines, which makes it a perfect candidate for pivot table usage will demonstrate how easy it is to provide quick results and answers pertaining to a financial data. To create the pivot table, click anywhere at the data, 
At the home tab, click insert, select pivot table. Confirm the range of your report. In other words, make sure that the range includes the entire report. As you can see, select it all the way down to row 1219. Then you can move it to a new worksheet or leave it on the existing worksheet. Let's move it to the new worksheet. Click OK. And here we have the default pivot table view. Let's move the total field into the sum values. We just calculated the full total of expenses for the entire year. Let's add more details into our report. Let's move the calendar period into the rows. So now we're getting a breakdown of the annual expenses by period. Let's select the, the cost and format it as accounting. Let's remove the period and let's add the category in the rows. Right now, we got a breakdown by category of expenses for the entire year. So accounting fees were 3,850, bank charges and fees were 1,406 and so on. Let's format it. So we select currency and click OK. And there you have it. Right click on the total field select sort choose sort largest to smallest and there you have a report that shows you the most expensive expense category throughout the year let's add more dimension to our report let's bring in the calendar period so now we have the breakdown of expenses by period you can expand collapse each period right click on the group select expand collapse select collapse entire field and the entire report gets collapsed to the single level of period total let's drag the category above the period and we have a report that shows how um, a specific group of expenses was utilized throughout its month. I hope by now you got a sense of how important and useful pivot tables are in order to analyze your data. It saves you so much time, all the manual work you will have to do by entering manual formulas to get summaries. Everything is done in pivots by just dragging fields around. In the next video, we're going to dive deeper in the functionality of pivot tables by presenting you with additional features.